Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this one, I wanted to talk about how to use the DeepSeek API in a React app to basically build the chatbot that you see here on the left. Now it's not done. I'm still working on it. It's my new AI app that will be available as a Chrome extension called EagerMe shortly. But I thought it would be kind of cool to take a look at how I actually was able to do this because, well, I just thought it was interesting. So the first thing that we should note here is that the DeepSeek API actually makes use of the OpenAI SDK. So all you need to do is install the OpenAI package and then you can get access to it by just providing the correct URL, which will be like api.deepseek.com or something like that. You'll also want to provide your DeepSeek API key, both of those two values I've put in my environment variables. And then the other thing that you're going to want to do in this case, in order to make it stream, right? So let me, let me just do this again here and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So uh, who are you? I think that's what I said before. This is going to take a second here. However, what you're going to notice is that when the response does start coming in, it'll start actually updating the UI word by word until the actual message is complete. And this I was able to do in two ways. Number one, you need to allow this to use or to operate in the browser. By default, oh, you can see it kind of working here, right? And I also supplied a prompt here to kind of tell it what it's supposed to be doing. So I said that its name is Eager and it is a personal assistant for the user whose name is Garrett. And eventually this would be your actual name when you sign up for an account. So now that we have that, right, so this thing can't actually work. The open AI uh, package cannot work inside of a browser and they do that intentionally. So you need to allow it to do so by setting dangerously allow browser to true. Then what you'll do is you will set streaming down here. When you actually do call for the completion, you'll set that to true as well. And of course you can give it whatever model you want and you can also give the messages which I have defined up here as a message having an ID and then the actual message which, can, which consists of a role, which you can't see there, I thought you'd be able to, but basically this thing right here, which is a role and the content. And so we keep updating this messages array here every time that a new message comes in. So a new message comes in, this is what we call from the form, a new message comes in and we create that message here. And then we go and set new message to true, which basically then triggers this use effect, which tells our bot that, hey, you have to respond to something. So we go and call handle completion and we pass in all the messages. We go through and format the messages because their API is very specific in what it takes. It can only take in an object or an array of objects with a role and content. And then we pass that into the completions uh, create method from OpenAI. And we also have streaming set to true. There is other stuff that you can set here, but this is kind of all I went with so far. And that's what allows you to have things kind of come in, update word by word as it comes in. But I think I actually might update that to not be the case. And the reason is because there's a huge security vulnerability here where in order to have this, in order to do the streaming, so I'm using Firebase as my backend, right? Firebase has Firebase functions. I love Firebase functions. They work very well. I actually like them better than Superbase functions, which I think are hot garbage. But that aside, maybe that's another video down the road where I'm going to rant about something. But um, the cloud functions, to the best of my knowledge, don't allow you to stream the response. And so that means that if you want to have the effect that we displayed earlier, where the words update one word at a time as, the, as they come in from the response, you need to run this either in the browser dangerously, as I said before, or you have to use a different backend runtime or environment mechanism that allows you to stream the response, such as using an EC2 instance just, you know, directly, right? I'd rather not do that. I want to stick to serverless wherever possible. And so I might actually change this so that it's no longer streaming, which would mean that I just call my own API, which in turn calls the DeepSeek API. It'd be a little bit slower, but I was thinking maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because as it is right now, when you're texting somebody, 
you see a bubble come up with a dot, dot, dot that indicates that they're messaging you or that they're typing. And that's really not the worst thing in the world, I think, because that people are already used to. And then you get the response in one completed chunk, not streamed as I showed it to you and as a lot of chatbots have been doing. So I think that might not be the, the worst thing in the world. And if I can figure out a way to maybe like speed it up or something like that, you know, these APIs are sometimes pretty slow based on, you know, how many people are using them. And they are doing a lot of work behind the scenes. So it makes sense as to why it would be so slow. And also in some cases, if the response is gonna be really long, it can also be very slow because think about how quickly it was able to stream that, that would be a minimum of how long the response would be. So kind of makes sense that they could be slow, I think. But in any case, I think that will probably be the direction that I go because then I don't have to worry about this deep seek key being exposed, which it probably would be, not probably, which it would be if I kept it inside of the React app and then bundled it and shipped it as as such. Um, even though it's gonna be inside of a Chrome extension, it wouldn't actually do anything for you because you can still inspect a Chrome extension in the same way that you can inspect any website. But in any case, I wanted to show how this kind of comes together and how you can build something like this and how this works. I thought this was pretty cool and using the OpenAI uh, node package here, that's all you really need. It makes it really, really easy for you. And if you don't stream it, then this right here will just become a, an object that has all the entire response that you want. So pretty easy to, uh, to work with. And I thought that would be really cool to show. I would encourage you guys to check out the API for your, yourselves. Uh, it was pretty cool. All I had to do was put in like, I, I think I just gave it like $2 just so that I could have some money. Uh, and it's like, you know, DeepSeek is really cost effective on, you know, compared to ChatGPT, especially ChatGPT. So I would definitely check it out if you if you can. Um, and this plugin or this Chrome extension is going to be coming probably in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that as well. All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.